88.5 LPFM, this is a better conversation. You were just listening to Lee Greenwood, the <laughs> one and only Lee Greenwood. God bless the USA. If you were listening to this live on the air, that's what you heard. Those yeah. of you on YouTube, uh, count your, uh, count your uh, lucky stars. Your blessings, Because uh, we too. were able to edit that out for you. Actually, we weren't able to. We had to edit that out yeah, for you. Yeah, we haven't you. done it yet. We will. Carl's not that good. I'm not that great. I mean, I'm pretty great, but I'm not that great. But we will. So, yeah. This is going on for a while, so we may or may not uh, be splitting this into two parts. I think we should. We can, because if somebody sees a three-hour video, they're probably not going to want to click on it as much. Or as often. Or as often. So, I wonder if we have any repeat <laughs> listeners. I doubt that. I think it's a one, and that's it. People are out. People they are like, yeah, this and... was nice. Um... These guys seem cool, but, you know, I like... Uh, Who said that? Huh? I've never been accused of that in my life. Way of... Uh, Being cool of any any kind. Oh, oh. You know, these guys, they seem uh, interesting, I guess. Um, Why do you keep making air quotes when you're saying all this stuff, Carl? I didn't make air quotes. <laughs> I'm assuming. That's, what, that's what's coming across. You might as well do that just to be Inter- honest with interesting. the audience. Interesting. Yeah, this show's, quote, interesting, end quote. It's in- Yeah, it's interesting entertainment, I guess you could say. Quote, entertainment, end quote. Yeah. So it's, we figured it's you know, quote it's end quote. Yeah, we figured it's a slow day. Might as well just keep doing this. It's hot, Carl. It is a, a fan today. It though. is a hot day. If there is any noise in the background, it is that fan. Uh, it is necessary. It's the whirring of the fan. It is the whirring of the fan. I can actually, if it's not a, our fans like people that listen, <gasps> we don't have any of those. What are you talking about? They're right outside the window right now. Oh, the chickens They're and the great. goat. They've been our main supporters since day one. How's the uh, picture of the alpaca going to get put up on our oh, one of our snap. shows? Did you want me to? You wanted me to put that as a thumbnail, right? Like as one of our shows, just throw it up as a as our little picture instead of the better conversation. The white. I can do that. Well, I, why not replace we, it with the alpaca? How about we make it this one? This one. This will be the special alpaca edition of a better conversation with Jay and Carl. I, f- I forgot to tell you, I fixed that picture of the. Uh, when we took a picture with uh, them with the sign, yeah, 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 out there, uh, totally stole. Uh, shout out to uh, Seven News for letting me uh, use your Photoshop. Um, Who let you? Was it Ann Richter? Ann Richter. Did she let you use her computer? So John Fryat. John Fryat. You ever met John Fryat? I have not. Do you know I, who he is though? Yes. What does he do? Does he edit his own shows up at wherever he's at, and then? See, I I don't know. I really don't know. I haven't seen him. I, I might have seen him once. Because I know he does the St. Lawrence County thing. So I'm assuming he probably does his editing at home and sends it down to Watertown somehow via something the internet yeah. probably now. But I wonder how he did it before. Would he I have to drive know. in the news story or? I don't know, man. Via courier? Did he have a courier? Carrier pigeon? Carrier pigeon? Uh, uh, Pony Express? Pony Express, yeah, something. United States Mail Service? Shout out USPS. To the US Why... Is there anything that's more infuriating than seeing commercials of the post office on TV? Yeah, like I didn't know about you before. <laughs> and <laughs> Thanks. why are stamps so high and shipping rates so high? Well, we spent $487 million last year on our, on our ad campaign, which bombed. Why do you need to advertise the post office? It's like advertising toilet paper. Exactly, Carl. We all know you exist. We've all considered the options. <laughs> Corn cobs. Yes. That's what they used to use in the, in the old days. days. Corn cobs. Back in the day. <laughs> I think back when, that's where that term came from, corn. Corn cobs. Yeah. Back when I was a kid, we used to use the leaves outside our window. Why? <laughs> you were kidding, like, 1999. 19, 1990, I was born in 95, okay? So you your parents used we, leaves in 1996? We used seven, leaves. We started... Not, you know, when you're toilet training. Maybe, you know what, maybe... What kind of leaves? Maple? Banana? We got them imported. Guava? Imported. There's nothing like a nice guava leaf, though. It's two... It's like almost three or four-ply paper. We only use the best aloe leaves. That would be nice. Soft and silky. Soft and silky. Yes, very much. You ever use baby wipes? I don't like them. They're just... Yes. Yes. As a guy, it's, it's... It's too liquidy. Okay, I do realize <laughs> that uh, this it's, conversation you're, topic is... You're trying to go opposite of, of that, you would think, when you're... So you got, it's all about buying the right kind. Area. 
You Ooh. have to buy the Yeah Whatever Super Center's brand of baby wipes. I do like a nice, dr- like I want, like the toilet paper though, I want industrial, like the kind you get at a ballpark. I want like real wow. thick. I don't want any soft absorbent, no silkiness. You're, you're not a you're not a Charmin Ultra Soft fan? Not at all, man. See, I, I, I see the benefits of all of these Brand Charmin Ultra Soft is great because poo pooing around too much. Let's get it done and over with. It is. I mean, we yeah, we we yeah, we should do that. But I, I think we can enjoy that ourselves. Was a pun, Carl. I didn't even attend that. <laughs> Good job. Wow. See, I know I, the raspberry wine. I don't know. Yes, I like Charmin Ultra Soft because it is very. It feels luxurious. But I also like Scott because you get a lot of toilet paper tissue? for your money. Scott toilet Not tissue. Not the person. I mean, Scott the person is pretty cool too. But the toilet tissue. You get a lot uh, for what you pay for, uh, and yeah, I I see the positives of both sides. Yeah, I just want to get get it done over with, you know. Fair enough. Fair In enough. Business. Fair enough. I'm the I've, only. I've, I mean, but we're not the only species of animal that does our business in private. A lot of animals. Not all, but some. Cats. Cats are private. Yeah, but yeah, a dog. Ask, he'll ask just go. Cat. I mean, he'll go right in front of you and just. Stick his nose up at you. Like, uh, yeah. What are you going to do about it, pal? When my, uh, yeah, no, I know. Did you know I heard that when uh, dogs use the bathroom, you know how? If <laughs> the bathroom where they, they go. You they, know what? You know exactly what I'm saying. Number two. When they do their business. <laughs> when they do their business. they the get business. They, they get it done. When they, you ever notice sometimes when they're doing it, they will look back at you? Like, like what you looking at, pal? They they're looking back at you supposedly because they're in a position to where uh oh, they're vulnerable they're to strikes. vulnerable position so they're looking at oh. you uh to uh look out for them Predators. and I say if it's a dog you more than you more than owe that to them so look out for your dog when they're doing their business so when they're in Please. the middle of your living room give them the respect they deserve yeah. by turning your head so not to Watch think that out. they're in a vulnerable attack uh uh vulnerable position yeah making sure that they're uh that they're covered maybe they're Max used to people whacking them with a newspaper right at that point so that they're just looking behind them like because they know yeah true the uh <laughs> sunday edition's coming at them yeah shout out to my dog though we don't ever hit my dog with a newspaper though what's He's your dog's name my dog's name is chesty and he is an english bulldog and he is great I just watched Best in Show last night. You watched Best in Show. Are you familiar no. with any of... Um, type it up there on the uh, computer if you'd like. Best in Show. You ever see Mighty Wind or Spinal Tap? Christopher oh, Guest. Sp- oh, Spinal Tap, yeah. Any of those movies? It's yeah. a Christopher Guest movie. It's about dog shows. And I like... What's good about Christopher Guest is... <clears throat> oh, none of his... Uh, It'd be very easy to turn all of his movies negative, oh, but he really pokes fun um, at people in situations. Nice in uh, a funny way. So yeah. it's it's it. They always have a good message. Oh, it's a mockumentary. I love mockumentaries. Yes. yes. Documentary of five dogs and their owners destined to show in the Mayflower Kennel Club Dog Show held in Philadelphia. It jumps among the owners as they prepare to leave for the show, arrive at the hotel, and prepare backstage before their dog takes the show as well as post-show. It's a lot of shows. Their owners and their dogs. Okay. Eugene Levy, Catherine O'Hara, Christopher Guest. Eugene Levy is probably one of the funniest men on the face of the earth. Very funny. You like SCTV? Or fam- are you familiar with SCTV? I don't think so. Second City Television was a Toronto-based uh, skit show in the late 70s, I do believe, in early 80s, um, but it was Canadian. So it was like right. Saturday Night Live, kind of, but Canadian. Now you had uh, Eugene Levy, Catherine O'Hara, um, Martin Short nice. come off of that show, Rick Moranis. Um, John Candy, obviously, of course. Why did I f- almost forget that? Are all of these people actually Canadian? Type in SCTV on there, and you'll see who's coming up. Gigantic he- Rick Moranis, gigantic heavy hitting Canadian comedy sketch show. Wait, were all of these people actually Canadian? And I didn't yeah. know. Yeah, and the majority of the P 
people on the show became stars. Oh, my God. All right. So, John Candy, Robin Duke. Um, I never know how to pronounce this guy's name. Joe Flair. Joe Flatterty. Fla- All right. Uh, Eugene Levy, Andrea Martin, Rick Moranis, Catherine O'Hara, Harold Ramis. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tony Rosado, uh, Martin Short, and Dave Thomas. There you go. Interesting. You ha- that's what a great show. I've Just an never amazing seen it. cast. And it was uh, it, <clears throat> so back before when uh, CKWS in Canada, Channel 11, for those of us on the Canadian border near Kingston, Ontario, this was on every night at 1130. So I would try to stay up going to school just to watch SCTV every night. And I think they showed two episodes. So I think it was on for an hour. And back when television was actually interesting and local affiliates would show their own. They had their own. They could do what they wanted to do without like uh, bigger networks, big network telling them what to do at night, Mm -hmm. which I'm assuming is what's going on where you are interning because Uh, of the level of. Content that's coming out of there is appalling. Yeah, the only local stuff we really have uh, down there is the news. Everything else is either why? CBS or Fox. Why? Why? This is why if I went up there and was in your position, they'd probably release me within five minutes because I would I would find uh, the owner of the station and ask her, what are you doing? That why? What happened to all your local content? How about doing something different than all these other affiliates are doing across the country? You're wondering why you're losing viewership. You wonder why you're a sinking ship is because you're not doing anything different or local. And local is the only way that broadcast over the air is going to survive. Just like this. this what we're doing, this medium of over-the-air FM transmission, it's not going to survive. eventually will only be low power or very small, very small powered stations because the internet has completely taken over the way people have listened to music. And if you cannot keep it local, you are not going to survive. Because if you're going to play the same 40 songs over and over and over on a playlist, every single day, the same hits, where it's just background music, and you're not actually talking about the music. Like, nothing bothers me more is when a DJ comes back from a song, and at least, not even at least once an hour, just... a maybe explain a little bit about the music or what's going on with the artist. I mean, I'm not saying you have to talk about the artist. Just make some mention. Don't go immediately to a car dealership commercial. It's it's infuriating. So yes. you're shooting yourselves in the foot because the handwriting is on the wall. You've worked there for 25, 30, 40 years, whatever, but you've destroyed the very company because the bottom line and the dollar became more important than the artists and the art that you were providing to people. And you're destroying your industry. It's going to go away. It's, it's, if people are going to be out of jobs because they're narrow-minded thinking. And it's sad. It's too bad. It is very, very sad. We're leading the fight here. Keep your, yeah. L, your uh, local radio stations... Uh, yeah, afloat. You keep your FM and like what we're trying to do, combine the internet. Hopefully soon we'll be streaming. I hope. Yes. Very soon. I hope. And uh, then we can touch the world a little bit. But then we get lost in the shuffle. So that's why this show always is talking to the guy a quarter mile up the road. Because that's why we're doing this. Mm-hmm. Because there's nothing different here in this area. So why not bring something different to the table? That's what we try to do. It is the exactly banquet table. What we try to do. I'm looking. You know, I'm looking at this SCTV logo, and it looks like uh, cops a little bit. Um, like the font. Maybe. I'm just thinking of cops when I look at this. Well, bring up the fox. Uh, the cops logo. Fox. I think it's a little different. Maybe it's, it's a little bit different. But the font might be the same. We'll see. Kill Fox is filmed on location. The men and women of law enforcement. All subjects are innocent until proved guilty in a court of law. Is that how it goes? I think so. Yeah, but it looks more like somebody stamped it. Yeah, a little bit. But I see around the edges of the letters. Like, look at the C and the S and then the S. Oh, yeah. It's it's got that similar. Good call on that one. Yeah, I I actually think I 
What did I see? I uh, play the cops song once in a while on my show. Bad boys, bad boys. By the band uh, Inner Circle, right? Yes. I used to watch back uh, back when, I don't know if they still do this. They might still do this. When uh, we had, uh, Cops was on Fox every, I want to say, uh, every yeah every Saturday night at eight, and then America's Most Wanted was right after yeah, that yeah, at yeah. nine. The heyday. Of the I show. watched that every single Saturday. <laughs> if it, if we didn't watch Cops and America's Most Wanted, then it wasn't really a Saturday. I liked Cops back then better than I I've watched it a few times since, but I don't like the way they edit it. I used to love when they would go to Detroit and they would spend however long it took to do one show, mm. and you saw them just riding around with with the Detroit police for a f- couple of weeks or whatever and you got to kind of by the middle of the episode you were kind of it made you I don't know the story was better because you were more uh, encapsulated yeah, within the, the the department like yeah, you knew now m- they now they would do it they jump there are multiple departments in each episode I don't like I don't like it as much I liked it better when they stuck with one town yeah see the the multiple departments thing is how I kind of grew up with it like it's back. too fragmented. It's too. It's when the internet, when people's attention spans went to zero. <laughs> they, well, we don't have time to. S- like when they used to go to Boston for two weeks. I used to love that. Mm-hmm. But now it's Boston, then you're in Tampa the next minute. Yeah, true. And it kind of loses the flow of the show. It's too. Very true. Jumpy. Very true. I did. I really loved America's Most Wanted though. That was like the. That was like the high point. That's a good book. He wrote right. a good book. If you ever get a chance oh, to read John Walsh. His book. Yeah. It's yeah, good. He, yeah, it was. I, I really liked that show. Sad and depressing, but good. Wait, what is to talk about? Just uh, just his son's death, and then oh, why yeah. he went into uh, the cases they solved. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it, I think it takes on five cases maybe that they had solved in the first few years of the show, maybe or something. Oh, okay, it was very good, but very depressing. Just you know, ho- you know, horrible. Killing after True that. I remember it, it. You just felt so invested when you were trying to catch these people. They're, like, do you remember when uh, BTK got captured? Uh, enlighten me on this. So, uh, BTK, uh, serial killer. Um, uh, BTK stands for bind, torture, kill. Uh, he was he was like kind of like the Zodiac in a way, where he was sending like taunting letters to like. Taunting letters to law enforcement and like newspapers and all that stuff, and he kept doing it. And they were, uh, like America's Most Wanted. They were like, like giving updates. They were talking about it. He was like a primary like case that they would talk about for like weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, and then they finally got him. So they and were instrumental in his capture. They, I, I, I actually think they must have been because they had the whole tip system thing coming in. T I P S. Tip, uh, T I P S. Uh, you know, viewers <laughs> could. I don't know where that was going. I just gonna go with it. Just making sure you're saying the word right. Tips. Um, yeah, like you could have viewers call in and do all that stuff, and they would do that. I know they received a lot of like really big tips to, like, <laughs> yeah. T I P S. T I P S. T I P S. Uh, tips. Uh. <laughs> Uh, in trying to catch some of these people, and they were caught, and uh, yeah, so that was a great show. I don't remember when they stopped doing it. Um, I remember Fox; uh, it it stopped showing on Fox, and then they got some other network to uh, uh, oh, yeah, it went it to up. like TNT or something, FX and then they picked it up for a little while there, and then they he was like, yeah, it's done. Well, you know, I mean, it had its run; it had a great run. But not Very. everything's going to transcend to the next generation. That is true. That's well, why, yeah. like, we've talked about Saturday Night Live, but that's why it does keep going, because every few years they turn over the cast, and it stays college age, and that's where their target market is. I have no interest in Saturday, Saturday Night Live, but it's not my generation. It's okay. It is. Okay. I love Phil Hartman. Up through Adam Sandler, that era. Uh, Adam Sandler, you know, you're kind of, uh, you're bumming me out a little bit, bro. Just wish your movies I'm were talking 90s Adam Sandler. Not, not rom-com. Not, 2000s. not rom-com. Anything past 51st Dates. I like 51st Dates. Which is good. At past like that, he fell off and 
Yeah. You ever see Jack and Jill? No. Uh, yeah, count your blessings. Uh, consider yourself lucky. You know what's another awful mi- movie? It's Mr. and Mrs. Smith with Jim Carrey and Tia Leone. Wait. Are you familiar with that movie? Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Wasn't that... I thought that was Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. Okay. What's no, Okay, that is. What's the one with Jim Carrey and Tia Leone, their husband and wife? Regular people that have to go into crime... Let's find out. Um, Something. I don't know. We're looking this I up. I get tired now. of Tia Leone, too. You yeah. ever watch? You ever see the, uh, what's the movie with Adam Sandler where she plays his wife? I don't know. It's, oh, 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 oh Spanglish. I have She's hateable never seen Spanglish. That. Like, her character is awful in that movie. I've never seen that. And you just, um, you understand, leave her immediately Please start dating the house the uh, housekeeper. Mm-hmm. All right, what do we got? Uh, Once bitten, the Deadpool, Earth Girls are easy. Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, Pet Detective, yes. The Mask, Dumb and Dumber, not Batman Forever. Uh, Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls, The Cable Guy, Liar Liars, definitely not Liar Liar. That Keep rolling, incredible. Truman Show, Man on the Moon, Me Myself and Irene, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, The Majestic, Bruce Almighty, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Uh, Lemony Snicket series of unfortunate events. Fun with Dick and Jane. That's it. Oh, I've heard of that movie. I haven't seen it, though. Now, do you see why I thought that? Because of the name? Wait, what did you it's say? It's like every name. Dick and Jane. I said Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Dick now, do you Jane. understand why my mind went to that? All right. Yeah, I got the, you. Because of the, the the plainness of their names. It just made me Dick think. Dick and of, Jane. Yeah. Awful. Uh, Britain, I'm glad I didn't get talked into going to watch that. I was seeing a girl years ago. She wanted to go see this. I dragged her into, uh, what's the movie with uh, Munich? It's uh, It was really long and really in-depth, and I loved it. She wanted she to go. Was like, she no! was basically sleeping. But it was, uh, it was about the 1972 Olympic Games where the Muslims came in and blew up the Israeli. Oh, yeah, and, yeah soccer team or whatever very good movie i think it's a forgotten movie throw that in there munich this is another one of spielberg's like under the radar forgotten movies that's one 1941 is another one of his movies that are oh this was 2005 okay yeah munich it's eric cool, banna was in it oh what a guy love eric banna. it's a great movie you ever see this movie i have Honestly, I don't even know if I've heard of it. That's what I'm saying. It's a Steven Spielberg movie that's below the radar. It's a shame. Some, of, I mean, some of his. I think some of his uh, later, his recent stuff is. I don't want to say has flown under the radar, but it isn't. Um, War Horse has it reached the? Peak? You ever see that War Horse? War Horse, yes. Um, I also enjoy AI artificial intelligence. Oh yeah, love I that, got movie. that on Ooh. tape. Yeah, I actually wrote uh, my uh, part of my research project for my. Uh, which will become my senior thesis. Really? Yes, and that will, and it's on artificial intelligence and how it is portrayed in f- uh, uh, film. Did you talk about Haley Joel Osment? I did. <laughs> I did. Haley Joel Osment or Osment? Osment. 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 Where's he? He is he on that farm with <laughs> those two guys still out in the middle of nowhere? Mm. You ever watch that movie? Where they him and. Uh, is that uh, Austin Powers' father? What's his name? What is and, that? Uh, Colonel, uh, what's his head from Apocalypse Now? Colonel Remember they got the farmhouse? Lo- I'm going to look this up. Yeah, come on. What's the name of that movie? What is it, Carl? Yeah, all right. Uh, pay it forward. Uh, secondhand Lions. That's it. Secondhand Lions. Never. Robert Duvall and what's his head? The British... Actually, I think he's Welsh. Um, Michael Caine. Michael Caine. You ever watch that? The guy, no. It's actually a good movie, but it's one of Haley Joel Osment's last movies, I guess. Yeah, he's not movies. really doing much. No. He didn't transcend into adulthood very well. Not really. Um, he's got one of those like weird, cute, adorable little kid faces. But then when you go does into not, adults. Yeah, it does not translate into adulthood. Yeah, let's see, what was he on? A, uh, Drunk History, great. Uh, Who? Drunk History. 
It's exactly what it sounds like. Drunk uh, people get together, drink, and then they talk about uh, history. Okay. Is this um, a show he's on? This is a show. I think it was only one episode, though. Um, oh, you know, I... Never mind. I, no, I, yeah, I've, I've heard of that. I don't remember what the channel it's on, but no uh, let's see what else. Uh, Entourage, the movie Entourage. Um, let's see. Uh, what's What have I heard of here? American Dad. As a voice? Is not a, a cartoon? Voice, yes, on American Dad. He's also in Kingdom Hearts, which uh, are games, very good games, by the way. Who? Um, Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> They're like uh, Pokemon. They're uh, role-playing games with uh, basically Disney characters. Dungeons and Dragons for little it's kids. Like, <sighs> Do you play this game? I've played the first Kingdom Hearts. They're very good. Like, okay. You have to. You have to be like into gaming. Like role into like, gaming. I guess you could. I guess you could say you would have been in my day a Dungeons Dungeons and Dragons guy. See, I think I, I can see you hanging with your friends. I played a couple times. I went to the library and played with these guys. I couldn't submerse myself into imagining what was going on. I just started making smart ass comments, so it didn't really work out. It, it's. I feel like it's coming back though. I think I hear about more people doing playing Dungeons and Dragons, and I just hear a bunch of great stories about with the dice and all that. Yeah, it was very complicated. I couldn't keep up on orcs yeah. and dice and. Yeah, counting see, in front of other see, people. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not as big of a Dungeons and Dragons fan. If I do play something of that nature, it's always like it's a it's a video game. It's nothing. I don't do any of the. It's, com- huge, it's replaced all that. You're submersing yourself into another world just digitally instead of with yeah, four but guys. I totally, I that totally, have no friends or girlfriends. True. I totally see the appeal of it though. Like I'd actually really like to do it at some point because I've never, I've never actually done that. But um, well, do you have a girlfriend? No. Well, you're halfway I'm there. I'm a perfect candidate. <laughs> you're halfway there. I'm halfway there. All we got to do. And I go to RIT, so I'm like three quarters of the way there. Um, do you wear a trench coat? Years ago, guys that wore trench coats were Dungeons and Dragons guys. Uh, no, but there are people who wear trench coats at RIT, though. Really? Really. Are they like uh, I've never they spoken. wizards or anything? Or? I don't know. I've never spoken to any of these people. Even when it's raining? Now, I can see a trench coat when it's raining and you're wearing a suit. But as a daily wear outfit, it just seems no, very you. cumbersome. And, and yeah, I'm always, I'm just, I'm more of a hoodie person. Just throw on the hoodie, walk out the door. Like it's don't have to worry about taking it. How off, about the really. zippered hoodie? I'm not much of a fan. Zippered hoodie means it's kind of like the scrolled bag. See, I like something about something about zipper hoodies. Like I always feel like they look fine at first, but then after you wear them for a while, like I don't know what it is. They just look weird. I'm they a get bigger stretched f- out where you're because you're always putting your hands in your pockets. Yeah, and so you have like a odd triangle shape to the bottom. Yeah, of it. I'm a bigger fan of pullover hoodies. Personally, they look better. But they're I, very I think they expensive. Look oh my god, you have no idea. Uh, I actually, do. Yeah, you do have an like idea. What am I talking about? Forty, fifty dollars. They're they're a lot. Um, if I ever, I have a uh, uh, a uh, blue Nike hoodie that I wear all the time, and my friends from college can attest to this. I wear it all the time. I have more than gotten my money's worth, but where did I get it? Sports Authority or something? Yeah, those things are expensive. Like, a lot of times I'll see, even, um, like, if you were to get merch uh, from a website or something, they're usually, like, $60 without shipping and tax. Well, you're just a sucker for buying it. I guess so. If everyone yes. just stopped buying it, guess what? Yeah, you know, we, all, tell our, come we all complain about the price, yet we still continue to buy this stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Cars are very expensive. They are very expensive. How about but they everyone just on the, get on the same page and go, for a year, we're just going to keep the car we have. We're not going to buy your cars. A year. Guess what happens? They lower the prices on the cars. Yeah. They so depreciate very quickly, though. They do. Which sucks because they're so expensive to begin with. They're very expensive to begin with. Very, very expensive. Extremely. Wish I had the money to purchase one. Ever. You need a no. car so you can learn how to pump gas. Yes. <laughs> are we in your living space? We are in your living space, aren't we? We are most definitely. Sorry. <laughs> we have an operating licensed that radio station. We're actually live right now. I'm, I, I didn't mean to. This is the first time. Like, we had a girl staying here before, like, the last two weeks. And we ran, like, we have never run into this before until okay. summer. And now we're, like, com- trying to. No, no, no. But, yeah, but this is very awkward, Carl. For being too weird, just tell us to tone it down. We'll be all right. Tone it down, Carl. Thank you. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. 
<laughs> I what forgot what we, we're talking about. We've been talking about uh, uh, how you love oh, Dungeons cars. and Dragons. Oh, cars. Cars. Yeah. And you need a car because you don't know how to pump gas, evidently. And you've been driving for six months? Eh, no, I'd say. Say no, even less than that, because I I wasn't really? able to get my, I wasn't able. I've had my, I had my permit for years, but I never wound up taking the road test. Did and then, you drive on your permit at all? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, oh, okay, and then you just I, never pump gas. Did you make your mom get out and pump it? <laughs> That's what she always did, <laughs> uh, Carl. I don't know what to say. The but show takes a very the show. <laughs> where is this, left where turn. are we even going? Um, That's fine. It's fine. We might as well just continue with it because it's only a blizzard. Why would I want to get out and pump gas? No, Ma, you got it. (laughs) I never see. That's the thing. Lift the handle, Ma. When I was driving, I never like oddly enough. We I never really had to pull in to a place to pump gas. Like I just maybe I didn't drive for I don't know. You've never owned your own car. I've never owned my own car. You had the family car, so I will give you the benefit of the doubt because I'm sure your old man probably keeps it. Filled and doesn't, does. you know, for yeah. the family, and it makes sense. Yeah, because he, yeah, he goes into town every night and he passes by, he gets gas on the way back, so I don't have to worry about it the next day. And that's nice of him. It is, it is very nice of him, Mr. Stemmon. Shout you're, out you're to a, you. You're a great dude. Stand up guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, does he always stand up? Does he sit once in a while? Uh, no. His huge he miracles, just veins, his ankles are just blowing out because he never sits. Yeah, he he sleeps sitting up. Actually. Does he? Um, is he an or astronaut? He sleeps standing up. Um, yes, he is an or astronaut. Stands sleeping up, I suppose. Mm. Yeah, he's a, he's an astronaut, um, but he's never been into space before. So, um, yeah, he's just so he's, he's still tra- training. He's trying. Yeah, he's trying to do something different with his life. Was um, he part of the Suez, um, like Apollo program at the end of? Uh... No, I guess he wasn't. You don't know what I'm talking about. I feel like I should because at the end I of the don't... Apollo era. There was a joint Suez um, Apollo um, joining in space, where Deke Slayton, the last Mercury astronaut, finally got a chance to go into space when he was just about at retirement age. Are you aware with any of, uh, of any of this? Maybe I'll have to do some research. I'd say nineteen. Let's look it up on the. Uh, oh, we can do research here. <laughs> yeah, we can do research now, Carl. Let's see. Want, really want to go to the library later? We don't have time to wait for that. Uh, what is it? The Suez Apollo. Uh, Here, I'll I'll just. How about we just Google it and let them do the job? Yeah, let's let's let. Yeah, enough of this Wikipedia nonsense. I love Wikipedia, but sometimes Google. Oh, the Apollo uh, Suez test project. That's it. We'll go back to Wikipedia. Deke Slayton. Is he mentioned in this? Let's see. Um, he's the astronaut. Uh, what was it? They joined up in space. And oh, the, the first joint U.S.-Soviet test or space flight. That's it. Is a symbol of a policy of detente that the two superpowers were pursuing at the time. Of course, that wouldn't happen until like '91 or so. Yeah. Uh, happened. It involved the docking of an Apollo Command service module with the Soviet Suez ni- 19. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, crew. Uh. What was his name? Deke Slayton. Oh, here's Donald K. Slayton. That's him. Deke Slayton. Look at that haircut, man. Ooh. You can land a small plane on that. Very level. I used to wear my hair like that when I was in the military. I'm embarrassed to say I wore a flat. I looked like like Kermit the Frog. When my hair is short, I have slanty eyes. I look like Kermit the Frog, and my face is shaped like a C. I do, you know, I know that, and I will admit it to everyone. Very nice. And I have divots in my forehead. On each side of my temples okay. from the um, forceps when they yanked me out of my mother what? violently in the mid-70s. Wait. Yeah, see these little, <laughs> these weird divots? I have like these dents in the side. I have an odd-shaped head. Oh my yeah, see? <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you, uh, Dr. Perchicani, I believe. was. See? Shout Italians. out to Dr. Perchicani. He's uh, trying to, you know, he's trying to probably get back to the golf course. Just trying to make his you, meal. He just wants to make you the most unique baby ever. Nick's parents had him over for spaghetti. You know, Italian spaghetti and then lasagna and then you know, all <laughs> wasn't that, that funny? <laughs> I loved that <laughs> a week straight. I love it. A oh, week. poor guy. A week straight. Poor Nick. See, I I mean I guess I understand uh, not wanting to have it all the time, but I freaking love pasta. So it's great, but I don't know. It's like oh, every week for five days. No, I you think do your it. bowels get used to that? 
Like, you know when you go to Mexico and you just get violent diarrhea for three or four days? Taco Bell. Um, like, if can you imagine having Mexican food seven days a week? No. If, like, if you're a Mexican-American and, I mean, seven days a week. Say you lived no. in Mexico. Now you're, Mex- you're actually in Mexico. This is all you have. This is your options. What do we have? Like, like in, well, this goes back to Three Amigos. Do you have anything besides Mexican food? Because that's true. Like, do they have violent, explosive diarrhea seven days a week, or do their no, bowels I'd eventually? Have, no, I'd say they'd have to adapt to it. You think they finally adapt to the continuous salsa right. and pepper? Yeah, I think just, it's, it's you're just <laughs> like, uh, Go ahead. you know, it's like whenever you change your diet and you see something like that, I feel like it'd just be the same thing. Like, you'd get used to it after a while. Your body starts to... Wouldn't you get sick of it after a while? Yes. Which is why I'm glad we live in the United States. So much. Because... Because if if, if know, we weren't, we couldn't be doing this show, Carl. We wouldn't be able to true. educate people. True. true. This is one of my old... That's an old bit I thought up years ago. It's not funny, but I just... It's about the Mexican food thing. I haven't thought of that in years, man. Wait, well... Oh, the thing the, bit, the Mexican said? joke, you know, the bit about that. Like, I remember I wrote that down probably seven, eight years ago. I used to have this uh, book I called Little Bits. Oh, okay. And uh, my previous previous job, two previous jobs ago, I just had a lot of free time in my hands, so I started just writing things down when they came to me. And I was known, like, I still like to do this where any job, I would just burst into a room and just ask the most off-the-wall question to try to get the most honest answer and funniest answer I could from my friends. Because like all jobs... If I could find a job where I could just make jokes and smart aleck comments, I would do it. And that's basically what you have here. Yes. But None of us are getting paid. But. No. It's, if I could yeah. volunteer and make jokes and witty comments. Well, wait. It's great. Am. He died. It's great. Not to bring us down, but. 1993. Brain tumor. I have a double uh, video cassette um, copy of a. Hey, you want some wine? Me? Yeah, we got some homemade wine my cousin made. You want a glass? <laughs> All right, hang on. Let me go nice. get a glass. Carl, keep the show rolling for a minute. <laughs> keep the show rolling. Um, Again, no underage drinking is taking place here. Why do you have to say that? Absolutely no. We've got to make sure we're square with the law, Jay. Yes, we are square with the law. Not to bring us down, Deke Slayton died in 93 of a malignant brain tumor. See, I didn't know anything about this, and we will investigate further. Let's see. Not much. Not much on Deke Slayton. Thanks, Wikipedia. But this Paulo Suez test project was the last manned U.S. space mission until the first space shuttle flight in 81. Also, U.S. astronauts Deke Slayton's only space flight. I did not know that. But shout out to the uh, Apollo Suez test project for uniting the United States and the Soviet Union in their times of stress because we desperately needed it, despite the fact that we would not <sighs> achieve detente until 91. It had to have been 91. Trying to keep this show going as easily as possible. This is a better conversation and not just me talking and rambling for three hours. What are we even at now? We're at about two and a half hours. This is, on record, the longest better conversation we have ever had. Our last one was pretty long. That was an hour and 40 minutes, and I have decided that we are definitely going to split this up into two parts, possibly three if we keep this going on long enough. Again, subscribe to us on our YouTube channel at Better Radio 88.5. No custom URL yet. However, you can help us achieve that by subscribing. Also, like us on Facebook at WBTS 88.5. Or no, w- WBTS Better Radio, excuse me. What else? Hello. Hi. Sophie and, Hi. and Jason again. We are live on the air. Yes, we are doing live introductions on the air. My cousin 
made this wine. He was in here last week, and we did a show with him. And um, I think he said he picked these with his berries out of his back. backyard. And he's going to bring some mead in, hopefully, for us at some point. You ever have mead, Sophie? You know what it is? Mead? Was it booze made? F- it's made from honey. It's like, but it's old school, like Knights of the Round Table stuff, right? Carl, didn't know what he it said? Was like, you know, yeah, it was like uh, the first traces of it were, mem- I think it was like in ancient China or something. I don't know. Yeah. I, How's I, that I, taste? I wish I knew more. Is it okay? It's really good. Yeah. Good. Kevin, you did you outdid yourself. Kevin, you did a great job. You have pleased three people with this. I, did he win any? Did he win anything? Uh, I, this bottle wasn't open, but I'm assuming that he had some from the same crop or whatever. So you've pleased year, several people, Kevin. Yeah, he's Give won awards a- at the New York State Fair, right? And he said, I think this year he's going to be in the fair, didn't he, for his meat or for this? Yeah, something. He got like a. I think he got. I think he's gotten gold, silver, and bronze. Yeah. Shout out to him though. How come there's not a fourth place of anything? Now, how come three came became the norm for awards? What would fourth place be like? It would be fourth place, but how come? I mean, somebody's coming in fourth. How come they don't get something? I don't know. I think that's like that's weird because that I think with that discussion you'd have to be like, well, where would you draw the line? Would you give everybody an award for participating, or would you only? Maybe it's the metals. Like, are you just going to keep going down to the elements? You know, <laughs> copper. You get <laughs> gold, silver, bronze. Uh, Here's a thermometer. Copper, <laughs> tin. <laughs> you aluminum. get a burn thermometer for mercury, obviously. Yeah, yeah, a metal made out of mercury. Um, How would you hold that in your hand? Mercury is like very soft. Gold is very soft. You have to add. It is very. Soft. What do you have to add? They add stuff to gold. I right? have no elements. idea. Well, yeah. Let's look it up in the World Wide Web, there, Carl. <laughs> gold. <laughs> And what they have to add to make it um, hard. How about what makes gold hard? We'll make this malleable. A set. Means well, it can be it can be manipulated uh, manipulate. somehow. Right? What okay. makes that be very expensive? Play-Doh. Yes. Gold. Sophie, this is the show. It's pretty boring. <laughs> that's this why is literally we literally all we do. <laughs> so I take sips of the wine just yeah. so I can get through it myself. Yeah. I was gonna say, I think you showing up actually made it way more interesting. Yes, because we have a third person now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, you know. Uh, okay. Uh, gold and gold. What makes gold hard? Huh. Let's ask that really interesting sounding question. Um. Let's see. Jewelry. It is usually alloyed with base metals. Um, mm. So copper is the most commonly used base metal, yielding a redder color. Okay. So copper. Um, let's see here. Yeah, 18 karat gold containing 25% copper is found in antique and Russian jewelry and has a distinct, though not dominant, copper cast creating a rose gold. Now, carrots. Di- what do carrots mean? I don't even know what carrots well, let's are. Let's find out. I think the higher, is it the higher the carrot, the better? I don't know. No one? I'm uh, not a, uh, you're not a jewelry? I don't know a lot about you str- it. You strike I bought me. two rings for women in my life. Well, f- three. Um, I had an engagement that didn't quite work out. You strike me as a jewelry expert. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> not according to the second woman that Anyone. I bought the, jewel- <laughs> the ring for. There was a lot of problems with it, according to her. Oh, go God. on. <laughs> uh, let's see. What I, uh, Carrot. Carrot is... Um, How do you spell this, Carl, for the people at home? K-A-R-A-T, okay. not carrot, the vegetable, or carrot. They're delicious, though. Yes, or carrot as the unit of mass, but K-A-R-A-T. Oh, so it's not a weight. No, it is a unit of purity for gold alloys. Oh, I thought it was a weight. Yeah, fine gold jewelry is usually made of 10K, 14K, or 18K. Some hardware devices, such as nuts, bolts, and springs. What'd you say? Some hardware devices, such as nuts, bolts, That's what I nails, and springs, are made of 8K gold, since 8K gold is much stronger than 18K. So even if the purity... Okay, so because the purity is higher, maybe it's softer because there's less uh, alloys or whatever in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh. You learn something new every day. I did not know what carrot meant at all. I didn't. Sophie, did you know what carrot meant? Why don't you tell us this? We took... <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, that's great. <laughs> oh, God. Thanks for your help. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> Enjoy the wine, man. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> Have fun. Take it easy. <laughs> All right. Well, that's, well that, cool. that's new. I did not know that that's yeah. that that was purity. I I thought it was. I actually I thought it was the. Uh, I actually thought it was the hardest of. The I got gold. you. But I guess it's actually the opposite because the higher the gold, it seems the so less. The higher hard. the carrot. The higher the, the carrot, softer. The softer it is because it's more pure. Is there one hundred percent carrot gold? I think it. I think it actually said. Um, uh, nine not okay. Nine 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 point nine nine nine. The purest gold ever produced. Sure. Uh, refined by Perth Mint in 1957. Um, let's see. Um, uh, eight carat. Actually, let's see. Uh, uh, 23 carat gold. That is nine five. Uh, 958.3. So, okay, eight carat. Uh, I'm just reading this off. <laughs> Putting everyone to sleep. It's a very good snoring sound effect. The minimum standard for gold in Germany after 1884 is 8 karat gold. The more you know. Dude, wake up. Huh? Dude, wake up. We so what been, happened? Carrots? Wake up. I've been reading yeah, off, I'll have carrot, that. That's I've good. Been reading off good. gold information for the last hour. You've just been out of it. <laughs> This well, is, this is a four-hour long show, and you just were absent for four-hour recitation on the this is, you were history absent of for one ounce <laughs> fine Google. <laughs> you were absent for a bunch of it. A wall for the congratulations. Entire... Boy, I wish I could play some of that Lou Rawls while we're talking. Oh god, Very nice. That album's great, Carl. What a voice, man! What a voice. What I that? put it out there last night. I would give away one of my vital organs. For a voice like that, to have Lou Rawls's voice, which I probably will at one point, probably a lung, but nice, yeah. But I think that's what he succumbed to. I'm assuming. How about we look it up? Let's look up Lou Rawls' death. I think he died. Yes, he died in 2006. Yeah, it's too bad. Uh, let's see. What uh, a voice! What a voice! You'll never find. Here's a music song <coughs> from the. Uh, sh- <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, whatever, Super Center. You'll never find another love like mine. Something like that. Yeah. I could never quite hear exactly what this saying. Yep, died from uh, lung and brain cancer. Really? Yes. <laughs> Look at the, that record. <laughs> Look at the cigarettes in the corner on the bottom left. Okay. See them? Yeah. Oh that, oh, that nice little... And then the ashtray. There's another full ashtray on the dresser. Dude, slow down. <laughs> Calm down, Lou. Can't say that anymore. No, Whatever. poor Lou. Poor, poor Lou. And that is, she's gone, so that she's is... She's gone, oh yeah. Let's oh see. Yeah. 1975, okay. Very nice. This guy had a crap ton of albums, too. He put out an album, like, every year since, like, 1962. Remember we were talking about Cannonball Run? Yes. He has a song... I think he's either in the movie or he, or one of the song is, songs are played uh-huh. while he's on. Let's see. I think it's one of his songs. Uh, is it You're My Blessing? Ain't That Lovin'? I Go Crazy? Will You Kiss Me? One, wait, when was Cannonball How about run? the Cannonball? 1980, 81? Somewhere um, there, the first one. Let Me Be Good to You. Sit Down and Talk to Me. You'll Never Find... Was that it? Uh, I think so. I can't remember. I remember seeing Lou Rawls as a small child. My parents would nice. watch <coughs> TV. And uh, him. I remember um, Chuck Man Joan from being a kid. That's good. Are you picking this up? Are you hearing Copy. what I'm doing? Clean. Da, 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 da. Video blocked in six countries. Da, 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 da. Great, you just got the entire video banned worldwide now. You would think he would like the exposure. That's Who's buying you... Chuck Mangione albums anymore? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you think he really cares? He's from like Rochester, I think. And he used to have a, a summer home in Clayton, I believe. Really? Yeah, I talked to some woman one day because I would love that song would come on at the, uh, yeah, whatever, Super Center. And I yes. would hear that song occasionally. And um, 
I spoke to this woman one day about it. And she knew him somehow. And uh, we had a nice conversation about Chuck Man Jung. I did not know that he Were you had. ever a fan of King of the Hill, the cartoon? I sell propane and propane accessories. They would reference Chuck Mangione quite a bit because at the, whatever their big Walmart equivalent is on the show, um, he was like the spokesman. Interesting. Right? Interesting. Right? I got to watch King of the Hill again. That show is great. I love that show. It's awesome. It is great. I think they have the best record. Bobby. Bobby. Actually, yeah, that does that there's, does there's look an familiar. Where, um, not Bill, but uh, who's his other buddy, the Exterminator? Um, hang on. Um, sh- Let's look up King of the Hill on the internet. They need him to get the rats out of the of the store, and Chuck Man Jones actually in the store, and he's in the episode. It's pretty good. Interesting. All right. If you <laughs> see if you can find King of the Hill. Chuck Mangione. I want to see the cartoon of that album cover mm-hmm. because he's like the official like music and spokesman. He's like the the uh, pitch man for the what is the name of the, of the store on there? It's not save a lot. That's a good um one. Megalomart. Uh, Dang old Tarbo Megalomart. Megalomart. Dang old Dang old Megalomart. Dang. <laughs> Dang. What is his... Uh, and it's his brother? Dang old Bill, man. Huh? Wait, it was the character you needed to know the name of. No, his buddy, his neighbor there. Oh, oh that's... uh Next door neighbor. Yeah, it's... uh Oh, it's Dale. Uh, Dale, yeah. Dale. Dale. That show is so funny. Because it was shot like a real show. Like, I, I wish it was still going on. Not anymore. 12 years, I think they had. It was a while. Yeah, it was... Uh, Let's see. It was on syndication. As of like two years ago, I got back into it for a while. They yeah, 90. Oh, yeah, 13 years. I actually didn't think it was going that late uh, to 2010. Um, Try to Thank find you. the uh, Megalomart Chuck Mangione. See if you can throw that into the computer files and see if that photo comes up. <laughs> Dang old Chuck Mangione, man. I like the Native American on there. Right there? Yeah, there it is. See? <laughs> <laughs> okay. The freedom All feels right, so good. Go. It's for toilet paper. There we go. See uh, the to- that's who he's hogging. See, look, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that is in- that is incredible. <laughs> the freedom feels so good. That is incredible. Yeah, that's a good. I love it. That's like a cardboard cutout is what that's supposed to be. It, yeah. But then he ac- he's actually in the store. He's in the back, and he's living in a giant pile of... Um, he's made a little home in the back of See, the, I don't, of I don't the remember store that out of those boxes of toilet paper right there. Those, yeah. I don't remember that episode. <laughs> Chuck Man. Interesting. <laughs> Chuck Man. <laughs> <laughs> that song is great. It's like 12 minutes long. So I, that's another I have to go to the bathroom song I throw in occasionally. I throw those on all the time. They're great. Yes. It depends on the length. depends on what you're doing, whether you're using... See, I have a... F- See... The I'm bare like, toilet paper, like you talked about earlier. Sure. See, when I'm here, when I'm not at my house, though, I have, I kind of have a policy. I'm not huge. I, I got to get in there and get out. Uh, I, I only can. Um, I, I don't do my business. I only do that at my house. The business. I watched the business. I keep saying that, but I watched The Godfather again. Okay. <laughs> and then the other day, and it's the scene where um. I Michael. realize I realize now my Godfather knowledge has declined heavily because that was bad. Well, it's it's not it's a little reference, but it's uh, when Michael shoots Salasso and McCluskey, the cop, and he shoots him in the rest in the restaurant scene. It's like the most famous scene of all time of movies. Um, but when anytime Salasso goes to start speaking in Italian, the business. The bu- the and business. I remember Saturday Night Live, boy, that just triggered a memory in my head. Triggered. Early 90s, mm-hmm. it was the 1992 election. Dana Carvey 
Try that. Look oh, it up. Right. Dana Carvey as Ross Perot was the skit. And they went into the Italian restaurant. No, 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 no. It, he was George Bush. That's right. He was Bush. And you know, I think it was during the Gulf War. And I think it had s- or something. And they redid that scene as Dana Carvey as George Bush. And it was very... Oh, he did a good George Bush, too. Yeah, I mean, that was... And it wasn't so much that they did a perfect impression of Bush. It was just the character caricature yeah, yeah. of Bush more than anything. Because there was far better impressionists but he, but he, he, uh, but you got to be funny and make the character interesting. Of though. course, so, so it was, was yeah, it was a, just a gigantic caricature of George Bush, and it was right spot on. I used to try to do that. He was like my hero, Dana Carvey. I had a picture in my locker in school of Dana Carvey. Nice. Um, I got a chance to do the morning announcements. Oh, that's the a best. couple of times in school. I that wedged my way. Best. I just walked into the office, said, "Hey, Mr. Brennan, who was the principal at the time." Dude, shout out to Mr. Brennan. Who was the coolest, the coolest dude in the coolest world. guy ever. Hey, do you care if I get on the air and do the announcements this morning? No, I don't care. So I did the announcements as George Bush one time. Oh, nice. I did the announcements a couple times. And this was at? This was at Thousand Island High School back in the day when it was cool and things should, were different. Should we edit that out? No. Why not? Oh, no? Nah, okay. I don't care. I'm Whatever. Okay. No, All I'm right. not talking that'll, bad about him. I'll stay in. Brennan was great. He was, the, he was a great dude. Yeah, shout out to Mr. Brennan. Was uh Not Walter Brennan. But no, the the old the, 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 older the one. principal. Yeah, <laughs> he he did great. I uh, he's one he's one of those people. He he will remember when you meet him. He will definitely is absolutely. He, is he remember. still alive? Yeah. Is he really? Like he was subbing when I was there. Um, as a teacher. Yeah. Really? Yeah. He was he was there. You see him around. He'd re- he would absolutely remember your name because he just really li- he really loves what he does. Him and McKeon. Do you know was Mr. McKeon there then? Uh, I don't know that name. He was the guidance counselor. Now, these guys, they were the kings of cool, though. I mean, when you saw Mr. Brian in the hall, you weren't nervous, you weren't scared. No, just a, he would just, he was the coolest, nicest dude. And Mr. McKeon, like, I remember I got in a fist fight one time. Ooh. Had to go to his office. And, well, that was, I had to go to Brennan's office. But he diffused the situation, was really cool about it. I also had to go to McKeon's office, so I was always down there for various things. But, but he would talk to you like an adult. And he was just a straight shooter, and he, there was no bull crap, and he was straight with you. And But he was also a good shoulder, and just like Brennan. If you had a real problem, you could go yeah, and talk yeah. to him. They wouldn't spread it around. They wouldn't tell all the other staff. Mm-hmm. They were stand-up, straight-up guys. And Mrs. McKeon, I don't know if you ever had her for elementary. I did not. She taught the first class. I was in her first class. I think, yeah, Lars was in it, too, my buddy Lars. Okay. So, and a handful of others. And I think that's how Lars and I actually got to be good friends oh, was nice. through that class. She It was her first class that year, teaching elementary at our school. She's my favorite teacher. Of all the of all teachers time. I ever had was Mrs. McKean. McKean. I give a great shout-out to her. She was w- wonderful. Yeah, they, I... Uh, we loved her, man. We would have done anything she wanted. We never gave her a problem. We were no, just... She just scolded us. I remember one time we got scolded because we had a substitute. And she came... I think I told her this years later. I saw her at a cookout of family thing or something. She yelled at us because we were bad mm-hmm. when the substitute was in. We felt awful. Terrible. Like, <laughs> like you could tell all the kids felt like, really oh. bad. Not like nobody was going on, you know, being a wisecrack. We they were like, really, sh- dang. Yeah, she, yeah, she really did it. That's and terrible. We felt horrible, and we respected her That's so much. That's how you know the teacher's done their job. They really get you feel bad for when you do something like that. She connected with all of us. Now, there's some other teachers I see. They don't say hi or anything. Nope. And I had them for a whole year. They don't even acknowledge it. Yeah, that sucks. Never yes. had that happen. Yeah, uh, I did but a couple that, times. Yeah, that, that, that's terrible. Just out of curiosity, did you ever have uh, Mr. Aguiano as a teacher? Yeah, he was great. Dude still subs there. He's the all. He's him yeah. and Mr. Brennan. They're who you want for subs. Uh, yeah, Mr. Aguiano, coolest sub. Uh, yeah, he's yeah, a good dude. His, yeah, I had him t- for, for social studies. I yeah, and he still does it, and he knows he. Like he's just really smart, and he's he's really loves talking about it, and he's a great sub. Everybody loves to have him. So shout out to Mister Agliano. You know who you are. So You're not even listening, but it's okay. And you know that 
we're saying good things about these people. I'm not going to say anything bad about people. I'm not going to name names in a bad way. But there's there is teachers not. that you have, for some reason, just cannot make that connection with the students. And I think it just becomes a paycheck for them. Yeah. And then they're in an uphill battle because the kids don't respect them. But they don't, they don't respect, respect the, the kids. kids. Yeah. So it's just like yep. stalemate. Some people are just not cut out for that job. Yeah. You got you, you got to have a way with with people to me. Got to have a way about them teaching all these kids. This song is Billy Joel. When he writes his name, there's a registered trademark next to it. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah, look anytime you see Billy Joel's name on anything, there's a big R with a circle around it next to it. Like on any of the old uh a compilation album or some. I have one compilation album here, and there's a Billy Joel song on it. Let's uh, find out, shall we? But uh, let's. Okay. He looks uh, like a thumb. You ever meet a guy and his, his head his looks head like, just a looks gi- like a thumb? Like a gigantic thumb. Yeah. Billy Joel looks like a thumb. I see, see thumb people around. But like I said, my head's shaped like a letter C, and I have uh, divots in my forehead and temples from the. Ah. The, the me force out of my mother's sort of womb. All right, I'm looking for this R. Do you know they of any albums? Is. It doesn't matter. Oh, I wanted to. I'll I wanted, show you the album. I have it here. I wanted to see. I want to see this because I've never heard of anyone putting their their uh, name uh, with an R after it. Wow, he is a brand as much as he is a person. <laughs> Michael Jackson doesn't have anything around his name, nor the, nor does like <laughs> Prince. Here's here's the album. It's called Golden Platinum Volume Four. Oh, there's Michael right on the cover. So you know that by the Volume Four, they they've scraped in the bottom of the barrel to try to eke as much money out of these record companies as possible. Yeah, Bruce Springsteen, no registered trademark around his name. Brilliant disguise, my favorite Bruce Springsteen song. I'm not much of a fan, and I don't get any deeper than any of his hits, and that's probably my favorite of all his hits. Robbie, Robbie Neville. Say la vie. Say oh, la oh, vie. Okay. Say I la vie. I follow. I'm going to try to see what we can do. Get it. That's about the 20th. Robert uh, copyright, Palmer. Right. All right. Didn't okay. mean to turn you on. Oh, that's on there? Grateful Dead. Touch oh. of Grey. Is there a... Era? Again, my favorite of their song. I don't go any is, deeper than that uh, song from Grateful Dead. Is there Day. an era that this is supposed to be? Is it like 80s? Uh, this is 80s. These, oh. this, well, this album is uh, 1987. Oh, all right. So it's anything pre-87. Susan Vega, Solitude Standing. I couldn't even tell you how that song goes. I played it one Me night. Either. I don't remember it. The way it is. Bruce Hornsby and the range. Yes. That's just the way it is. Carl, we will never change. Should have known better. Richard Marks. He was in Clayton not too long ago. What? Should have known better. Wait, wait, wait. What's Fall what? in love with you. Was we it played like- at the thing downtown in Clayton, the museum. Oh, okay. Previously known as the museum. All right. And uh, Modern Woman, Billy Joel. What? Produced what? by right. Phil Ramone. Hmm. That's not their real name. Like of the... Ra- the Ramones. Of the Ramones? Oh. That's, they're not that's, really the Ramones. That, I mean, yeah, they're, they're, they're not really brothers, I don't think. No. No. No, that's just John. Uh, no. I, Johnny Ramone, that, I feel like that barely even sounds like a real name. I'm not a huge fan of the Ramones. I, I like them to a degree, although I um, I, I kind of, I'm into other bands that are kind of of the same. Uh, genre? Genre? Well, yeah, they're like punk. Um yeah. I don't get punk, but I understand what punk is. I understand punk was just ripping apart everything. The soft, overproduced music of the 70s, shredding it down to its bare essentials, mm. which it needed to be done. Once in a while, you got to just tear the wallpaper off and start over. Yeah. Nirvana sure. did the same thing to hair metal in 1992. Yes, sir. I, and I was never a fan of Nirvana at the time. I still really am not. I'm all right with Nirvana. I like Nirvana. I don't. I'm not their biggest fan, but um, they're cool. I was still into Aerosmith. I was still a hair metal Van Halen guy when they came out, and I never really See, got I, it. I really, I do like 80s metal, though. I just, I really like it. There were two camps then. Like, you had, Nirvana was, the guys in 10th grade were listening to Nirvana. 
I was still Van Halen, Aerosmith. So there was a definite change in the, in the direction of the music, plus demographic, because it was slightly under me, I think, in a way. I mean, it was not maybe not really, but in my head. It's a yeah, obviously. Uh, no, yeah, there was there was definitely there's definitely the a hair metal guys this. didn't. I don't think they turned to it. I don't think they went to it really, to to no. grunge when it, it came and out. It's different. It's weird because the metal community is such a like the an interesting community. group of people. Uh, Mike's Metal Madness. Mike's Metal Madness Mondays and Fridays at ten. Be there. I played it Monday night when I left here. Um couple of CDs. I think I played 11 and 12, but I got to get some more of, of a CDs. Yeah, I'll, I'll see him. I'm a me- I'll uh I'll have him share some more with me if he makes any more. That's what he be- that's what we've been doing. Do you ever go through there? You probably don't want to stop though and see him. Oh, uh, we I did uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah, I got I got uh 14 and 15 from him. It was it was weird cuz I had to go I <laughs> I had to go into the back. Mm-hmm. And I like wasn't in. Obviously, I don't work there anymore, and I wasn't in uniform, so it just felt odd just walking right back there as if I still worked there. But he was right there, so I mean, actually, people did that anyway. But if it, it was to go to the bathroom, sure. I don't know. I'm self conscious like that. You know how it is. I know how it is, Carl. You know exactly how it is. Well, Carl, what do you say, man? We've been on here like two hours. Uh, we've been here. Wait, what, did we do it at I think quarter we started at quarter after one. I think we started it. Right? I, I think we started it at quarter after 12, dude. Really? We've been on, I think we've been on for like two hours and 45 minutes. Really? We took yes. a break. Took a well, break. We kept going. We're definitely dividing this up into two parts. Well, you've uh, squandered another three hours of your life, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes. If you somehow... Watched both parts and made it to the end if you're on YouTube or you're listening now and you've been listening to the entire time. Thank you. And I also have to question your degree of sanity. <laughs> but that's not up for me and to taste. decide. <laughs> I, and taste. But we appreciate it nonetheless. S- speak for yourself, Carl. I will. What, are, what am I even supposed to be playing right now? Oh, wait, I know. All right. I'll get back to it. We'll, uh... I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see you guys later. Peace out.